The fabulous Hudson Hornet was a legendary race car who went on to become a doctor, the crew chief for one of the most decorated race cars of all time, and a close friend to all of the residents of his home, Radiator Springs. But what did Doc Hudson do to become a famous race car? When Doc Hudson took over the racing world in 1951, the same year his car model debuted in real life, there was no official tracks built, there was little money to be made, and there was no pit crews, and many of the most prominent cars of the time had come up smuggling moonshine. It was all just dirt and tough cars, and Doc was ready to compete. But what made Doc Hudson such a great racer? With a low center of gravity and agile cornering, he was tough to compete with. Plus, a sticker on Doc's hood stated he was carrying twin H power. That meant he was packing a dual carburetor, allowing him to mix air and fuel more efficiently so he could accelerate and go faster. The other racers just couldn't match his precision in the lines he was driving without crashing, which meant it was hard to catch his number 51. When he arrived at Thomasville Speedway, a place that would become his home track, Doc declared himself the fabulous Hudson Hornet, and soon he proved to everyone that he deserved the title. Smokey was the friend in his corner going into race days, as he was a Piston Cup team owner who also owned an automotive shop. He helped guide Doc through his racing years, and with that assistance, the Hudson Hornet began to take down the best racers of the day. The scrappy and humble River Scott was surpassed by HUD. Louise Barnstormer Nash, known as the First Lady of Racing, won three races in a row against Doc in his first year, but she couldn't hold him off for long, and even a backwoods champion like Junior Midnight Moon wasn't able to keep the fabulous Hudson Hornet from 13 wins and his first Piston Cup in 1951. Doc had taken down the legends of the early Piston Cup circuit, but he was just getting started. In fact, that was the lowest number of wins in a single season that he would have throughout the rest of his career, and the following season would be where he made history. In 1952, Doc broke the record for the most most wins in a single season. The fabulous Hudson Hornet took home 27 victories and a record that has never been broken. And of course, that year he also earned himself another Piston Cup. Sure, in 1953, Doc only won 22 races, but he took home his third consecutive Piston Cup, which cemented him as a champion for all time and one of the greatest dirt track racers in history. His accomplishments would also inspire the next generation of racers, including Strip the King Weathers, who would go on to be a driving legend himself. The King became one of the most successful race cars of all time as he would earn seven Piston Cups, a feat that wouldn't be matched until Doc mentored his own pupil. Junior, the Hudson Hornet was my inspiration. But in June of 1954, after taking home 16 victories that season, the fabulous Hudson Hornet went through a career-ending crash during the Fireball Beach 500. Doc had pulled away from the leaders, but in the final stretch, he lost control in the the sand, flipped multiple times and was left a wreck. The Hudson Hornet was out for the season, and by the time he was rebuilt, out of the garage and ready to return, he was told that racing had moved on without him. A new rookie was added to the roster in his place, and Doc was never allowed to race again. There was a lot left in me. I never got a chance to show him. Devastated by the news, Doc decided he would completely disconnect from the racing world, which led him to cut off his fellow racing friends and even Smokey. Two years later, the Hudson Hornet went down a new path as he enrolled into a four-year program at Northern Pneumatic Polytechnic School of Mechanics. In 1962, he became a doctor of internal combustion, and he updated his license plate to reflect that. Doc's license plate is 51, his racing number, HH, his model, Hudson Hornet, and MD, his professional. Profession, doctor of medicine. But after he became a doctor, he went and hid himself away. In the mid-1950s, Route 66 was beginning to meet its demise as Interstate 40 was being built to bypass the road, which made it a great place for Doc to disappear to. When he arrived at Radiator Springs in Carburetor County, the town was already in decline, so he was welcomed with open arms when he decided to run the Ornament Valley Mechanical Clinic. Doc became responsible for fixing bad spark plugs and solving rattles and engines. He was the one who was looking out for everyone's health. Over time, his wisdom, tough attitude, attitude and compassion allowed him to become a well-respected member of the community. They embraced him as their own, even though he was a very private person. Doc's standing with the good folks of Radiator Springs even allowed him to become a judge. But regardless of how much he loved and embraced Radiator Springs as his town, there was a part of the Hudson Hornet that remained sad, angry, and bitter over how his racing days were completed. In his garage, he hung up the article that showcased his crash specifically so that he 
he would always remember why he could never go back. And for years, his piston cups just felt empty. Over 50 years after his crash though, the racing world found him again. Everything changed in 2006 when a rookie racer named Lightning McQueen showed up to Radiator Springs and accidentally destroyed their road. Initially, Doc was prepared to punish the car who wrecked their town to the fullest extent of the law, but when he saw that it was a race car who had entered the town, he wanted him to be gone as quickly as possible. With some convincing from the rest of the citizens though, he had a change of heart. Doc ordered that Lightning McQueen would only be released after he fixed the road himself. Right away, the fabulous Hudson Hornet saw saw in Lightning McQueen everything he despised about racing. Lightning was arrogant and selfish. He was rude, cruel, and completely overconfident, which Doc was happy to expose. When Lightning rushed the road's reconstruction, Doc challenged the rookie to a one-lap race around Willie's Butte to decide who would do the road the right way. Of course, at the start of the race though, Doc did not take off because he knew Lightning wouldn't have the skills necessary to race on dirt. And sure enough, the young race car took the final turn too fast, skidded out of control and went into the ravine. You drive like you fix roads. Lousy. While Doc hated the idea of keeping a racer around at first, he loved getting the chance to punish a self-absorbed rookie. What the Hudson Hornet didn't expect though was to see some grit in the boy. Seeing Lightning's determination to figure out the turn at Willie's Butte throughout the night and into the morning after successfully paving a beautiful section of the new road, Doc was intrigued. He tried to reach out to Lightning to explain how to successfully make the turn at high speeds, but the wisdom he shared was just thrown back back in his face. Doc kept receiving more attitude from Lightning, and he felt disrespected when the race car went into his garage without his permission. The rookie had discovered Doc's secrets and begged for advice from him after he had already tried to share. Lightning even tried to spread the word about who Doc truly was in his early life clearly against his wishes. There was a part of Doc that wanted to connect with who he once was, but he despised the idea that he was anything like Lightning McQueen, and he couldn't stand remembering all the pain he felt when he was ripped away from the sport he loved. Sure, Doc was concerned that Lightning would hurt the citizens of Radiator Springs, but he was also worried that Lightning and the world of racing would turn their back on him again. Once Lightning finished the road, he stayed even though his final race of the season was coming up soon. The racer remained to support the community and to show his appreciation for their kindness, but Doc couldn't stand it. He wanted racing out of his life again, so he contacted the media on Lightning's whereabouts in hopes of driving the rookie out of town. While it did get lightning out of Radiator Springs, Doc immediately felt how empty the place became without him. The townspeople dispersed, the neon lights were turned off, and Doc was left alone in darkness again. Lightning had not only brought life back to Radiator Springs, but to Doc himself. And Doc wasn't going to let the fire within him hide any longer. Doc decaled himself again as the fabulous Hudson Hornet, rounded up a pit crew from Radiator Springs, and drove all the way to the Los Angeles International Speedway so he could be Lightning McQueen's crew chief during the most important race of the season. The Hudson Hornet was back, and the racing world was stunned to see a legend return to the spotlight. Doc's guidance kept Lightning in the race and even put him in position to win the whole thing. But when the King suffered a terrible crash, just like what Doc had went through, instead of taking the victory for himself, he helped the racing legend finish his final race. Lightning didn't win a Piston Cup that day, but Doc could see that he had the heart of a champion. You got a lot of stuff, kid. Thanks, Doc. Following Lightning's rookie season, the race car set up his headquarters in Radiator Springs, which put it back on the map. The racing world, including race cars and fans, quickly descended on to the tiny town now that it was home to a world-famous racing team. The citizens of Radiator Springs even built a racing museum and continued to restore the town to its former glory. Racing was finally being reintegrated into Doc's life, and over the next few years, he was Lightning McQueen's mentor. In every way, Doc opened up again. He was goofier and more lighthearted. He reached out to old friends like Smokey again to share about Lightning's successes, and he allowed himself to fight for Piston Cups again. Together, Lightning and Doc won three Piston Cups together, and the Hudson Hornet was so proud of him. Those were the happiest days in his life, but it all couldn't go on forever. After years of working with Lightning, Doc eventually passed away, but we don't know the circumstances that caused it. 
Maybe he died of old age, or maybe he became sick like his voice actor Paul Newman. We can't be sure what happened, but according to Jay Ward, the creative director of the Cars universe, there was a draft of Cars 3 that would have shown Doc's death. Lightning would have been driving with Doc following close behind him until the good old fabulous Hudson Hornet couldn't keep going. And personally, I love the idea that Doc spent his final moments driving his heart out with a race car who had brought joy, happiness, and peace back to his life. But how was Doc Hudson remembered? With the passing of Doc, the Piston Cup was dedicated to him and renamed in his honor. The clinic he had run in Radiator Springs was converted into a museum focused on his career. At Thomasville Speedway, his home track, the owners erected a statue to remember his time racing there. In Disney California Adventure Park, we were shown that every year around Dia de los Muertos, Ramon put up an ofrenda for Doc in his body shop. Doc's racing number of 51 was eventually passed down to Lightning McQueen's own protege, Cruz Ramirez, and the title of Fabulous was taken on by Lightning McQueen himself once he retired from racing with seven Piston Cups. McQueen donned Doc's famous navy blue color, decaled himself in the same way his mentor had, and attempted to pass down the wisdom and continue the legacy of his mentor, the late, great, legendary, Fabulous Hudson Hornet. Let me know what you thought about Doc's life down in the comments. And while you're down there, consider becoming a producer of the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support my mission to create the highest quality videos I can about Disney, movies, and the art of animation, while also earning exclusive rewards, consider going to patreon.com slash Isaac Carlson. And you can also find this original t-shirt along with a variety of other magical designs at my shop, imaginativestore.com. Finally, thanks for watching and have a magical day.